right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thanks for joining me. I am back in Philadelphia today, um, making another video for you guys. So thanks again for uh, keeping me company when I'm on the road, in a way, and uh, giving me something to do. Um, we're going to continue our discussion where we where we left it off last time on the overhead panel here. So we're going to keep moving down and talk about the next system that we have to tackle here today, and that is this panel right here, the GPWS panel, and uh, what is this system, first of all, on, on board the airplane? It's the, the ground proximity warning system. Uh, sometimes you'll hear this referred to as the JIPWIS. It's kind of a, a buzzword that's commonly used out there in industry, and uh, this, strangely enough, was always kind of one of my small pet peeves. I don't really know uh, the why or the how or the when. Uh, somebody decided to add a couple extra letters into an acronym that... Uh, don't necessarily need to be there, uh, but uh, you'll hear that term a lot, the JIP whiz. But um, what is this GPWS uh, exactly? Why is it there? What is it for? How does it work? All that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about that today. But uh, from a high level you know, standpoint, uh, the, the GP, or excuse me, the, uh, uh, GPWS uh, is a system on the airplane that uh, directs terrain uh, collision threats and provides oral and visual uh, cues to alert the pilots of, as such. And one of the things uh, to talk about uh, first right off the bat is most modern aircraft actually have something called uh, eGPWS e or an enhanced GPWS. Um, I don't know why Airbus decided to leave the E off because um, I believe all their airplanes have, uh, have the enhanced uh, uh, functionality or capabilities uh, built into them. Uh, but I wanted to kind of tell you uh, a little bit about what exactly that means. So I pulled up uh, another graphic uh, off the internet here that kind of spells it out for us. But basically the, the basic GPWS, I mean, this was developed earlier uh, in civil aviation as aircraft were kind of coming along and, and safety systems were being developed. But think of this as a, a strictly downward looking um, uh, piece of safety equipment on the aircraft that uses uh, radio altimeter uh, readings, which, you know, as you can imagine, it's just, um, you know, the, the radio um Altimeter just sends out signals out, you know, kind of the belly of the aircraft and bounces back. That's kind of how it knows how high it is above the terrain that it's flying over, you know, immediately that, at that point in time. Um, and it just, you know, uses that, that radio altimeter um, information and then air data and, uh, um, uh, you know, barometric readings to just basically tell the airplane, you know, hey, you're, you're this high over this terrain that I'm over physically right now. And that's all well and good, but uh, where you know the enhanced uh, uh, version of the system really shines is this fact that it, it's actually kind of like think of it now as a forward-looking uh, system that kind of tells us and looks out ahead of the airplane and says, "Hey, you know, well, obviously we're flying through the air, we're move, moving really fast, and we're closing with you know various uh, terrain features out there. So it'd be really nice to kind of know what's going on ahead of the airplane." So what they've done is they they kind of um, they built in the system. Uh, you know, a couple more uh, data inputs. Um, so, you know, we have the air data, the radio altimeter still, the barometric altitude, but also the airplane position in the form of GPS. And then they also kind of develop this terrain database that, that um, you know, kind of is loaded into the airplane. And a combination of those two things is able to give us, like we said, this kind of forward-looking capability to say, hey, this is where the airplane's at, this is where it's going, this is what's out ahead of us. You know, I know I'm right here right now, but, you know, this is coming down the road if you keep flying like this. So um, that's the, the difference between the, the basic GPWS and the enhanced GPWS. So like I said, you know, think of it like downward-looking and forward-looking is kind of the, the difference there. So um, from a, a high-level standpoint, once again, um, We'll, we'll kind of tackle this a little bit more, but I, you know, I wanted to kind of tell you, you know, a little bit about, you know, what it looks like inside the airplane, what it sounds like if we, you know, were to uh, trigger this system and, and get a uh, caution or a warning, uh, which alerts us to, uh, like we said, a, a hazard up ahead and that we need to take some kind of corrective action. Otherwise, uh, if we don't do anything, uh, we're going to impact terrain. And that's, of course, <laughs> very bad, not the desired uh, thing we're trying to do with our airplane. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll kind of talk about it in, in one of the later slides, but um, just uh, you know, a couple examples of things you might hear from this eGPWS system. I mean, you've, you've probably heard tapes or recordings inside cockpits, but uh, uh, forgive my, my lack of impression 
uh, skills, but you know, you'll hear something like, you know, whoop, whoop, pull up, terrain, terrain, too low flaps, too low gear, sync rate, any number of things uh, that could, uh, or different types of warnings that could be triggered. Uh, and also on the Airbus, uh, you will get a visual cue also, and I've kind of pulled up out of the manuals what this would look like. We have these lights on uh, both the, the first officer and the captain side of the, the forward kind of glare shield that, you know, depending on um, if you're getting just a, a caution, um, you'll get an amber GPWS light that comes on first. And then if this progresses to a warning situation uh, where the airplane's actually directing you to pull up because you're going to hit something, uh, the pull up um, uh, cue will, will light up here in red. And uh, that, that will, of course, be accompanied by, like we said, the, uh, the oral warnings that um, we just talked about there. So um, we talked a little bit uh, just uh, basically about uh, how the system works. So as we mentioned, I mean, the airplane has the, you know, the various means of sensing apparatus. It has that terrain database, and it, it, it's always kind of looking to see, you know, hey, where am I at in relation to um, the terrain that I know is out there? And... Uh, it's going to give you uh, data uh, based on those things uh, that we talked about. Um, and one thing I wanted to talk about and, and uh, kind of explain too is um, on the uh, navigation display that we have in the Airbus, I mean, this is what it would look like when we have the, um, the terrain awareness display pulled up. Now on the, the nav display, it's interesting. You can only uh, display the terrain information or the weather information um, independently at one time. So in other words, you can't display both you know, forms of information um, simultaneously on, on the nav screen. So you actually gotta pick one. And, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, you will be in these situations sometimes where let's say we're taken off from a place where we wanna have the terrain awareness about what's you know, going on you know, immediately in the, the airport vicinity that we're leaving from, but maybe there's some weather out there that we, we know we're gonna to need to navigate around uh, right after we take off. So one technique that we'll actually implore sometimes is, you know, we'll, we'll have the flying pilot, you know, have the weather radar up perhaps, and the, the non-flying pilot will have the terrain display up on his side so we can kind of work together and, and kind of get a good, you know, accurate picture of, of what's all, you know, going on out ahead of the airplane. Um, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about and explain also, uh, it seems to be kind of a misconception, and, and I was even confused about this, you know, when I first started learning, you know, about uh, jets and, and, and you know, how some of these systems work uh, from a more detailed standpoint. Uh, if you were to go up in the flight deck and, you know, watch this, you know, terrain um, display here kind of function as we move through the air, um, you kind of see this like, you know, sweeping rendering going on. And I always, you know, was, I think, you know, some people might be confused and think like, oh, well, you know, is, is the radar looking out there and painting the terrain uh, that it's seeing? And, and we're bouncing waves off the terrain in the same way that we bounce waves off a, a weather system, for example. Uh, and that's not exactly the case. What, what it's actually doing uh, when it's sweeping back and forth is it's just kind of updating the graphic of, you know, where the airplane is now and uh, you know where the, the terrain is in, in current relation to that. So I just kind of wanted to draw a part in everybody's minds about you know when you're when you're using the the terrain display, you're not actually using the airplane's radar to to you know shoot signals out and, and bounce them off of um, you know the mountains or, or what have you might that might be out in front of the airplane. And um, like I say, you might be kind of confused if you're just up there watching this thing sweep back and forth. Um, a little bit confusing maybe, but uh, the interesting thing is that there's actually a terrain mapping function function on the radar. If you wanted to actually, you know, use the, the airplane's radar to, um, you know, paint, you know, the ground, you can certainly do that. Um, we, we rarely do that to strictly look at terrain, but it is a, a possibility, uh, but it's just not uh, necessarily the, the main you know, reason that the, the radar is there itself. It's, it's more for weather, of course. So I uh, just kind of wanted to point that out and, you know, maybe draw those, um, those two things apart uh, in your mind. Um, one other, you know, big thing I wanted to mention about the, the eGPWS and how it functions is a lot of it has to do with, with a closure rate. Um, so, you know, it's got to do with this concept. I mean, a lot of times these, these, uh, these alerts will get triggered um, you know, because the airplane is detecting that you might be going like really fast, like towards a, a mountaintop or something like that. Um, and it, it just, um, it's important to, to make that distinction because like it is kind of this dynamic 
nature that the airplane is kind of calculating to say like, well, I might be, you know, in one scenario, I might be, you know, somewhat close to this terrain, but I'm not actually closing with it that quickly, so I'm not going to actually trigger trigger an alert. Um, but by contrast, you might be very high up in altitude, and you might be coming down, you know, at a really, you know, fast vertical speed, and uh, it's, you know, maybe the terrain is physically further than that scenario that I just described, you know, further, but because you're closing very fast with it, the airplane is saying, oh, you know, we're We've exceeded our tolerances here, and you know you're going to get too close to this terrain here if you keep doing what you're doing, kind of thing. So, like I said, I just wanted, wanted to make mention of that because it is like a little bit more of a complex function than just like strictly, you know, where the airplane is physically at a point in time, you know, altitude-wise or, or distance-wise away from, um, you know, a, a, a portion of the terrain out there that we might need to have awareness on. So. Uh, hopefully that makes sense uh, for you guys. Leave me a, a comment or something if, uh, if that doesn't uh, <laughs> spell it out for you. But um, I also want to talk about, um, so the, we have the, the GPWS side that we have these five basic functions that um, are kind of built in the airplane. Let's kind of talk just briefly about you know, what each of the, the basic five functions are. Um, we have these different modes that are, that are kind of spelled out. Um, in the, uh, the the flight manuals here, but mode one just excessive uh, rate of descent. So uh, kind of like you know, I was just talking about, you know, a moment ago there, if the airplane you know senses that um, you're closing too fast with the ground, it's going to give you a sink rate, sink rate, pull up. Uh, eventually, if you don't do anything, so that's mode number one. Uh, mode number two is um, excessive uh, terrain closure rate. So um, if we are um, flying you know let's say like laterally uh, towards a mountaintop or, or what have you and, and you know, you're, you're closing too fast uh, to it um, it's going to give you a terrain terrain tell you to pull up there's terrain out there so that's mode number two uh, mode number three is uh, altitude loss after takeoff so uh, if for whatever reason you know you you just broke ground the aircraft begins to sink uh, the airplane is going to say don't sink don't sink um, so in a real world, you know, application sometimes, you know, or a situation you might hear this is uh, if you got into wind shear uh, right after takeoff and you got into a downdraft, you know, the, the airplane is seeing, you know, hey, we're supposed to be <laughs> moving away from the ground and uh, we're in this takeoff configuration and uh, we're sinking back towards the ground. So it's going to uh, trigger a mode three alert. Uh, mode number four has to do with um, the aircraft uh, configuration. So the airplane's uh, smart and it knows you know when you're getting down low close to the ground uh, it'll actually look at you know where the flaps are where the landing gear is at and if it you know senses that you're too low without you know having those things properly configured it's going to give you you know a, a too low flaps or a too low gear uh, those are some possible things you might hear so that uh, is mode number four uh, mode number five uh, it will uh, be triggered if you descend below the glide slope so um, you know, if you get, uh, I, I can't remember the exact tolerance. I want to say if you see, if you get more than um, about one dot low on the glide slope, you'll you'll start to hear this glide slope, glide slope, and it's telling you, of course, to, uh, that you're getting too low, and uh, you need to uh, rectify that situation and get back on the glide slope uh, as you continue down towards the uh, the runway there. So, um, those are our five um, basic modes of the GPWS system, uh, and then you know we when we kind of talk once again you know, a little bit about what we mentioned early on in the discussion about the enhanced uh, uh, version of the system. Um, that's, you know, kind of this forward-looking, you know, business that we talked about. And uh, these graphics here, you know, once again, just right out of the manuals, but it just kind of, you know, shows this concept, you know, that there's this this boundary ahead of the, where the airplane's at, you know, that, um, you know, if you get, you know, within a certain range, it's going to trigger a caution. If you get too close to it, it's going to trigger a warning. And um, like we said, it just it just kind of shows you a little bit about you know the the where and the how uh, it's looking out uh, ahead of the airplane. Uh, one interesting thing that that I find fascinating is it's actually got this um, this uh, nuance of the system, if you will, that um, if the airplane's turning, it will actually kind of look to the side of uh, where the airplane is going to kind of look out for you know what terrain is out there. So it's just kind of a I think kind of a neat or genius feature that they built into the system. And that's just what this graphic kind of talks about here. 
Um, and one other portion of that, that terrain or forward-looking system is this terrain clearance floor feature that we've got built in there. Basically, um, all of this is is you know around every runway that we you know have in our database on, on the airplane. I mean, they, they've built this kind of these rings here that you know within a given range, um, you're supposed to be you know outside of this uh, this area here. Or in other words, like you know operating you know a safe distance away from whatever terrain is around whatever airport or runway that we're we're operating in and out of. So. Um, if you were to uh, penetrate, you know, this floor here, it's going to give you, uh, you know, too low terrain warning and, and tell you to uh, rectify the situation. So uh, that spells out um, a fair deal about, you know, just the, the basic operation of the, the EGPWS and, and what it is and how it operates. Um, so what do we do if we get one of these uh, cautions or warnings? That's a great question. It's actually a memory item that um, we have committed uh, to memory. Uh, so we have to be able to respond uh, immediately um, to, to save the day, you know, if, if we're ever in a situation like this, uh, unintentionally, of course. But this is, you know, just right out of the flight manual or the, the QRH here for uh, EGPWS alerts. Uh, we're going to turn the autopilot off. Uh, we're going to uh, pitch the aircraft up. We're going to bring the thrust levers up to toga. Uh, we're going to check and verify that the speed brakes are retracted, and we're going to uh, bank the wings to level so we get the max amount of lift we can to you know, climb away from uh, whatever turning we might be getting too close to as quickly as possible. Um, one thing to talk about here, too, that's, that's kind of interesting, um, if you guys remember, uh, I think it was the uh, early 90s or... Uh, late 80s, somewhere in there, there was an American Airlines 757 that had a, uh, a controlled flight into terrain accident. This was the Cali Columbia. It was American 695, I think, was the, uh, the accident there. Um, but it, if you recall, you know, the, the basic circumstances of, the, of this uh, accident was that the, the airplane was navigating into this Cali airport, you know, area, which is a very mountainous, uh, you know, part of uh, Columbia down there. And they accidentally had kind of gotten turned off course as they were trying to, pro uh, they, they kind of went heads down to program their, their FMS and kind of get set up for this approach they were trying to conduct in there. And so the, the airplane starts taking them off in a direction they didn't want to go. And um, they, you know, the, the e EGPWS functioned as advertised and they got, you know, the, the warnings eventually that told them to uh, pull the airplane up. So they they responded to this, um, but one of the interesting things was uh, in their haste uh, or in the commotion of the situation, the, the speed brakes didn't get retracted. And I, I've never flown the 757, and uh, my understanding is it, it, it maybe at this time did not have this, this functionality built into it, but um, the, you know, the, the sad part about this accident is they say that had the flight crew remembered to stow the speed brakes, um, they they estimate that the plane would have had just enough, uh, you know, cap climb capability to um, to miss that mountaintop that it slammed into. And I, I remember like reading some kind of case study about it. There was some kind of really sad, you know, margin that you know they, they I, I think it was a, a, you know, less than a few hundred feet that they actually like impacted the top of the train. And like we said, if the the speed brakes had been retracted, they might have had the lift to just get, you know maybe a few hundred feet above the, uh, the top of the train there and clear it, and uh, this horrible accident wouldn't have happened. But um, the reason why I bring this up is, um, I don't know if the, it was this accident specifically that kind of caused manufacturers to change you know, the way they were designing airplanes, but on the Airbus, for example, and other airplanes that I've flown, and I, I'm sure this is um, uh, probably a, a modern thing moving forward, but there's actually um, a safeguard built into the system that when you bring the thrust levers to toga, the speed brakes will automatically retract, and it's just kind of, you know, it goes along with this idea that if for some reason you are going to toga, you're probably wanting to climb away from the terrain and therefore, you know, the plane knows to retract the speed brakes if you don't do it yourselves. But um, it's, it is still in our memory item just to kind of verify that that has happened. So um, just a little backstory on, um, on the speed brakes there and the, and the memory item and, and the corrective actions that we're supposed to take if we get one of these uh, cautions or warnings. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to tell you about the system itself. So um, coming back and, and talking about the push buttons uh, themselves, um, these push buttons uh, for the most part are not things we're using in a uh, normal you know, day to day routine flight operation. Um, I'll, I'll go through every one of the buttons and kind of talk about them individually. but. 
Um, uh, the first one on the left here, the, the terrain push button, this kind of just turns off the enhanced uh, or the uh, you know, forward-looking terrain capabilities um, that we mentioned uh, earlier on there. So you would just you know, use the push button and, and bring it to the off position. And you know, I was trying to you know, figure out a time when you actually do this, and I, I kind of read around in the manuals, and it was interesting to me that um, on the Airbus 320, uh, FMGC1 is actually the, um, the flight computer that kind of feeds position data uh, into this the GPWS there so if for some reason FMGC1 was completely offline or was faulty or um, also you might do this if the uh, nav accuracy was off um, you would actually you know turn the system off because uh, basically the airplane is just saying like I don't have the, the most reliable way of telling you where you are in relation to this terrain that I have in my database so um, I'm probably going to be giving you erroneous warnings <laughs> and uh, that would be very distracting uh, if we were trying to fly around like that, so that might be an instance where you would actually intentionally turn the, the terrain, you know, feature of the system off here. Uh, and the fault light would just come on if the airplane itself detects a fault uh, within the terrain system there somehow. I don't, I don't know um, the nuts and bolts of every single scenario that would would drive it to do that, but that's what the fault uh, light indicates there. Uh, uh, an interesting thing too to mention is that if you had the terrain, um, you know, push button off here. Uh, it would actually not affect the modes one through five of the basic GPWS um, you know, things that we had talked about earlier there. So just a little sidebar thing. Uh, the uh, system uh, push button though, that would turn off those mode one through five uh, warnings that we had mentioned earlier. And uh, I was trying to think about a scenario, you know, when you would, you would turn that off. Um, I, I think, you know, if there was some problem maybe with both the radio altimeters or something like that or you know some of the um, you know sensing information on the airplane that you know directly tied into these mode one through five alerts you know that would be a reason why you might turn uh, the the system uh, push button off there uh, the next one to the right is the the glide slope mode one that we we talked about um, and all these but these three buttons here on the right these are there um, if we want to intentionally silence these alarms um, or these alerts that go off. And um, like I said, the, the glide slope one is kind of interesting. I, I can't think of a lot of great scenarios where we would actually intentionally you know, want to go below the glide slope and, and have the airplane tell us that, uh, or not alert us that we're doing so. Um, maybe you could make a stretch and say that you know if you're landing you know flap zero you're you're intending to come in with a little bit shallower of a um, of an approach angle for the sake of you know, um, you know getting the airplane on the runway with adequate stopping distance so you might you know tell the airplane hey I'm I'm intentionally you know trying to do this and, and you know don't uh, give me these glide slope warnings because it's just going to annoy me <laughs> and distract me if you know, that's what I'm trying to do but uh, even that. Um, I don't really know if it, you know how likely of a scenario that would really be for for most of us if we're in this kind of situation. Um, the flat mode push button, though, that does kind of directly relate to that scenario uh, that we talked about. Uh, let's say we had a, our flaps uh, become inoperative or they jammed in the in the zero position, so they're they're completely up, and you know we're intending to land the airplane with no flaps. Well, the airplane doesn't know that unless we tell it, you know, hey, uh, you know, don't give me flap mode. Uh, warnings because I'm intending to land at a, a, at a flap setting of uh, zero, one, or two, which are never landing settings. Uh, and then the the push button on the right. This one actually, um, you will see this used from from time to time, although it's pretty rare. I mean, um, this basically tells the airplane that um, I am intending to land at flaps three, which is an acceptable uh, flap setting uh, if we choose to do so. Uh, so you would you would use the push button, uh, and one interesting thing here to point out too is that all these other lights here are off switches except this one, <laughs> which uh, says on. Um, I think it's it's kind of uh, um, I don't know just a, a strange uh, way they designed it um, because I, I I feel like the concept you know with all these buttons here is just telling the like we said earlier the airplane that we're we're doing something intentional that uh, we don't want to hear warnings for but. Um, yeah, anyway, sidebar, little little note for you there. Um, but uh, in instance where we might want to intentionally do a flap three landing, um, if it's very gusty outside and we don't want to come in with full flaps because we want to maybe carry a little extra airspeed for for safety margin's sake, uh, you might intentionally elect to do a flaps three landing. 
and um, you would come up here and use this push button and tell the airplane, hey, I'm intentionally doing this and don't give me an alert that the airplane's not configured when I'm trying to land it uh, because this is uh, my intent, uh, as we said. So um, that's about it for this one, guys. Pretty much wraps it up uh, for everything I wanted to tell you about the the GPWS panel here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comment section. Um, and I, as I always mention in the other videos, uh, I'm trying to field questions out of the, uh, uh, you know, if you guys have anything. So if anything pops up in your mind, anything I can answer for you about flying or the, or the Airbus in specific, I'll, I'll try to do my best to give you uh, accurate answers and, and good data on that. So uh, once again, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, until next time, take care. We'll talk to you soon.